Construction began in 1927 with ships dumping a mixture of sand, silt, rocks and clay into the water in enormous quantities, eventually creating a 32 kilometre barrier that you could, for example, put a motorway on. Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. We got a video today about the Offshore Dyke. Okay, so I did a reaction um, the other day about uh, it was... Uh, that something about the there's something weird happening in the Netherlands, right? Nothing weird. We all know that the Netherlands reclaimed land from the sea and this and that, but the original channel was from Thoughty too. Well, anyways, during that um, reaction, I had a question about the Oslo Dyke. Uh, it's very interesting to me. It's intriguing, and I was wondering, like, you know, like what exactly? Like, if you're in the middle of it, can you see the land? And a lot of people are saying no, that you can't. But there's a couple people that said you can. Maybe it just depends on the day, right? If there's fog or not. Um, I think it'd be kind of scary to be in the middle of a, uh, a, a highway that's literally surrounded by by water, right? Where you can't see land in sight. That's just crazy to me. It's a foreign concept uh, for sure. Um, I've never even seen the ocean before. The biggest body of water that I've ever seen was Lake Michigan, unfortunately. Well, anyways, I just got a priority request from Kaylin shout out to you um for this video the offshore dike why the dutch built a motorway in the sea so i think we know why because they wanted to block off the zooter sea i think it was called the zooter sea right and then now it's called uh what is it called let me check let's see here zooter sea was a shallow bay of the North Sea in the northwest of the Netherlands. Okay, so what's what's it called now? What does it mean now? Okay, Eichel Mayer, I think is what it is now, yeah. But anyways, priority request by Kaylin. Links down below if you want to support the channel. Donate $10 or more, and as a special thank you from me, you get a priority request, right? So he wants me to check out this one. The original channel is called The Tim Traveler. You can find links to that in the description section down below. And we're going to learn about the Offshore Dyke and why the Dutch built a motorway in the sea. I've seen some Tim Traveler videos before. I'm pretty sure I did some reactions to them. Um, yeah, let's check it out. By the way, very beautiful landscape right off the bat. Love it. Got the windmill in the background, the willow trees. Willow trees are, are, are probably, without a doubt, my favorite kind of tree. I love them. Hello and guten Dag. Guten Dag. I'm in the historic city of Alkmaar in Holland. And if you just said, the country's actually called the Netherlands, Holland is only a small part of it, then 10 points to you. Yeah, two parts. And then minus 20 points because this actually is Holland. Anyway. Two parts. North Holland, South Holland. Used to be one part. It was too powerful. My son just woke up and came in here and scared the crap out of me. <laughs> I looked over and he was right there. <laughs> Good morning. I love you. <laughs> wow, that scared me. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Anyways, uh, it, was, it, was, uh, it was getting too powerful. So they decided to split it up into North Holland and South Holland. Alkmaar seems like a great place, but this video is about how I got here by crossing the sea on a bus. On a bus. We're gonna check out Alkmaar. Where's that at exactly? I think that's in the uh, Flavorland polder, right? Is that right or no? I'm probably wrong. True, duh. If it was in Flavorland, it wouldn't be in Holland. North Holland. Okay, okay. Gotcha. So he maybe he came from Lewarden or Groningen over on that side. So yeah, Alkmaar. That'd be a crazy place to live. The motorway in the sea. That's crazy looking to me. This is Leeuwarden, the capital of Friesland province in the north of the Netherlands. I was right, Leeuwarden. That's where he came from. Wow. And not in Holland. 
Nope. You can catch many buses from this bus station, but only one of them drives 32 kilometers across a sea. So we're going to get that one. Nice. And just to recap, this bus is going from here, Leeuwarden, to here, Alkmaar, via here, the sea. A one-way yeah. ticket costs 20 euros, but I've shelled out an extra one euro for a day ticket, so that I can get off and back on again. About 30 minutes into the journey, there's surprising news for Swiss passengers as we turn off at the Dutch seaside village of Zurich. This is the Swiss last stop passengers. before we cross the sea, and in most countries that would mean the bus now drives onto a ferry. But this is the Netherlands, so instead, the road just carries straight on across the water. Yeah. This isn't a bridge, they literally just built a motorway in the sea. On a dike. In fact, more accurately, what they built is called the Afslaut Dike. In English, that translates as the shut-off dike, and it's basically an extremely long dam that separates and shuts off the bay on the left from the North Sea on the right. Okay. Behind that grassy bank. Which is the actual dike. Construction began in 1927, with ships dumping a mixture of sand, silt, rocks and clay into the water in enormous quantities eventually creating a 32 kilometer barrier that you could, for example, put a motorway on. The idea was that if you shut off the bay, you could drain it and lower the level of the water. Why would you want to do that? Well, the productivity, shall we say, of Dutch people had been increasing, and now there were lots of little Dutch people, and the population was getting bigger. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good way to put it. Lots of little Dutch people. Normally, this would mean cramming more people into the same space. But a Dutch politician called Cornelis Lely came up with a brilliant idea. Why don't we make more space? Pretty sure the Netherlands is actually the only country that's actually gained more land without taking it from somebody else. They took it straight from the ocean. Right from Poseidon. <laughs> it was such a brilliant idea that there's now a statue of him here, standing oh, cool. majestically looking out over the waves next to a bin. So here's how it worked. Since much of the bay was very shallow, you only needed to drop the water level by a few meters to create a whole <laughs> load of new land for housing and farming. These three huge areas, including all the cities and villages that stand on them now, didn't exist before the Afslaut Dyke. Right. They're what's called polders. The Dutch had been draining lakes and creating polders for years, this was just the same thing on a much bigger scale. That's what I saw. Almer, that's what I got confused when he said Alkmaar. That's why I was like, oh, is that in Flavorland? But then I realized, duh, it wouldn't be in Holland. You know, Flavorland's a whole different province. I got it confused with Almer. And creating polders for years. This was just the same thing on a much bigger scale. The project took six years to complete, with between four and five thousand people working on it every day. Yeah, look at that. It's just water as far as the eye can see. Now, this looks like it's not quite a clear day. Um, I did get some comments on that one video that I did where I was asking about if you could see the, the land, you know, when you're right in the middle of the Ausula Dyke. But, uh, you know, a couple people did say that, yeah, you can, you know, because I guess it's like 20 miles across or something. But uh, I, I think it's really dependent on the weather and how clear the skies are and stuff, because a lot of people said no, that it's just water as far as you can see. So I, I really think it's just weather dependent and, and the visibility levels. And here in the middle of the dike, there's a monument to the workers, marking the spot where they closed off the final gap. Oh, cool. But more interestingly for me right now, there's also a little cafe here which serves Frisian specialities such okay. as Slachuske Hachtball with Pindersaus and Frietjes. Well, I'm sold. Frisian, man, that's an, that's an interesting culture. Like, I need to check out more stuff about Friesland. Friesland? I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but very interesting culture. And it's not just in the Netherlands. There's, there's, uh, uh, Friesland was actually stretched into Germany and Denmark at one point in time. And I, and there's actually isolated, it's separated now. It's not one area. 
uh, it's separated, but there's a pocket of Friesland in Germany and a little bit in Denmark as well, I'm pretty sure. And I'm pretty sure I burned off most of the calories straight afterwards by climbing the observation tower and hauling this door open. Up here you can see the almost surreal sight of the motorway stretching into nothingness in both directions. He wants to play. And it gives you a sense of what an incredible piece of engineering this really is. It is, however, an 80-year-old piece of engineering now, and like many 80-year-olds, it's in danger of becoming a little bit leaky. <laughs> a four-year program of reinforcement has begun, which will replace the outer cladding of the dike while widening the body and raising it by two meters. I'm going to go back. Let's see. So the Afsalike barrier dam has been protecting the Netherlands from the sea for more than 80 years. The dam, however, no longer meets the current water safety requirements. Reich's water slot will therefore be reinforcing the absolute dike. We will be making the dam stable and overflow resistant by reinforcing the outer cladding, among other things. We will also be strengthening the locks and discharge sluices, and we will be building powerful pumps in the sluice complex near Den Over. The pumps are required to discharge more surplus water from the Isla Mare to the Wadden Sea during extreme weather conditions. The pumps that will be constructed are expected to be able to handle a capacity of 400 to 600 meters squared per second. I don't know if that's right or if I said it right. Um, in comparison, that capacity can pump out water from 10 to 12 Olympic sized swimming pools in one minute. Wow, that is insane. That That's why they have an exclamation point. Um, this means the Oslo Dyke will have Europe's largest pumping station. However, the dam is much more than purely a form of protection against the water. It borders the natural areas around the Eichel Mere and the Wadden Sea. It is part of the cultural heritage of the Netherlands and therefore has a major tourist value. Moreover, it serves as an icon for Dutch hydraulic engineering. Various government bodies, regional water authorities, social organizations, and entrepreneurs are working on projects together to strengthen these values. De Nieuw Dyke, a partnership between several Dutch provinces and municipalities, is working together with the government to implement ambitions related to sustainable energy, nature, recreation, and tourism. I wonder when they're going to be doing that, actually. I might have to check into the new... Dyke at some point. We'll replace the outer cladding of the dike while widening the body and raising it by two meters. This will protect it from rising sea levels in the future. Yeah. Allowing it to protect the thousands of Dutch people who live, work, and catch buses on land that simply wouldn't be there without the Afslaut dike. Nice. It'd be scary to drive across that in the middle of a storm. Like, luckily, they don't get, like, hurricanes over there, I'm pretty sure. But, like, man, or tsunamis. Like, that would probably devastate it. Lily. Is that where they get Lilystad from? This music's going to copyright claim me, I think. <laughs> oh, was that it? I'll probably actually end up muting that music in editing to avoid a copyright claim. But anyways, that was very interesting. Um, very cool to learn about the new Ausla Dyke, that they're going to be reinforcing it, building it stronger, and all that good stuff. Shout out to Kalen for the priority request. If you want to make your own priority request or just support the channel, there's the link down below. Uh, you can hit like, hit subscribe, hit that notification bell, and have a super fun, awesome day. Take care.